afternoon, everyone. Hope you had a great lunch. Um, so it's, it feels very quite special for both Ru and I and I to be here on stage today because just a year ago we were like sitting uh, in the audience. Uh, it was actually the second day uh, that we had both joined Coty to form the new uh, e-commerce team in the luxury division. And so it was a brilliant uh, um, forum to be at just before we started our roles and we were like super inspired by everything that was shared and we took that learning into our journey at Coty. And uh, we joked in the audience a year ago uh, saying, oh, maybe in a year's time we'll have something a bit interesting that we can also come back and share. <laughs> so here goes. Uh, and before we share some like case studies and journey that we've been on, I wanted to quickly um, introduce a little bit more about Coty. So um, basically, so who are Coty? Or um, as we like to call them, the new Coty which is basically that uh, big uh, beauty company that was reborn a year ago when the then Coty uh, business, which was a uh, 4.5 billion um, company specializing in fragrance and cosmetics, uh, merged forces with um, the PNG beauty brands uh, to kind of double size uh, at the time. So like, as you can uh, understand, it's quite a big disruptive uh, merger in the beauty industry. And uh, coming together with such a big portfolio of brands, the ambition for uh, Coty is to, on the one side, combine uh, scale to really uh, act uh, like as a, the, the global beauty leader of tomorrow, with, at the same time, uh, agility uh, and speed and a rea really a challenger mindset. So it's, uh, it's got a purpose of uh, liberating the diversity of your beauty that is uh, powered by, uh, by 77 brands uh, globally. So you might recognize some of them, the likes of uh, Chloe, Gucci, Hugo Boss, Calvin Klein, but also Rimmel, Max Factor, uh, GHD, uh, OPI, Adidas, like quite a lot of uh, really great brands uh, that are organized today on the three business uh, divisions. So luxury that we're part of, uh, color cosmetics with the likes of uh, high street brands like Rimo and Max Factor, and uh, a professional beauty division. So these three divisions kind of act uh, with their own separate uh, P&Ls and businesses, uh, but they all have uh, very different e-commerce challenges that are they're faced with. But what underpins uh, everything is um, our CEO's like real strong statement of intent to really accelerate e-commerce in all the divisions. And uh, what we've seen in terms of culture that's been really great for us to come at this time is they created the growth and digital uh, division to really accelerate e-commerce. Uh, but they've also made some uh, different uh, statements, one of them being the acquisition of Bimli, which is our own like uh, internal digital agency, to other things like making sure that everybody in the organization whatever their function, now has one of their objectives and goals on their work plan related to digital and e-commerce. So it's been just like a journey we started on because it's just been like a year and as you would expect in those sort of mergers, uh, like there's quite a lot going on. But it's great to see that we're progressing in this direction and a really exciting place uh, to be. So what does it mean exactly for luxury? Luxury is where we sell most of our fragrances, so just uh, we'll give you two bits of context about what that means about the business and that underpins the, the challenges we may have. So the first thing to, to know is that uh, Coty Luxury operates under a licensing model, so we don't actually own uh, the brands that we work with. Coty is the licensee of about 20 brands, so we work with the likes of legendary brands, iconic brands such as Marc Jacobs, Calvin Klein, um, Gucci, amazing, we work with uh, real visionary creative minds as well to bring to life their brand universes via Sense to the UK consumers. So why this is relevant <laughs> um, is Coty is kind of between a rock and a hard place. We work with the licenses on the one hand, at the same time we work with the retailers on the other hand. Um, we don't have access to the licenses brand.com websites Likewise, we don't have access to their data, so we have no influence at all on what they do on that side of their business. We work with our retailers, Boots.com, The Perfume Shop, Feel Unique, Debenhams, and we work on their websites to sell our fragrances. Jonathan touched a little bit this morning about not, the retailers not sharing data with us. To some extent, we get some data from the retailers. 
as I said, from the brands, we don't get anything. So we're very much working in between these two to try and bring fragrances to, to the UK consumers, and it's a bit of a tough job. So paradoxically, we are an e-commerce team, but we don't actually have our own e-commerce site. Um, so to get things done, and the reason why we're giving you this context is um, it's quite difficult to get things done because we're trying to please two different people, uh, two different sides of the, of the coin, and we're stuck in the middle. Um, another element of context is uh, to do with the product itself. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for a second. Yes, close your eyes. Um, and think about, think about a scent that might be special to you. And it might be the scent of a special place, a scent or a fragrance or perfume that reminds you of a special time, maybe a flower that you like, maybe the first time someone you loved gave you a fragrance. Maybe you see colors, you see emotions, but probably you remember stuff. And it might be joyful emotions, it might be excitement, it might be nostalgia. So now if I bring you back with me, Maybe what you've just experienced is some sort of that emotional, sensorial thing that relates to fragrance, and that scents have the, the, the power to trigger images and memories. And yet, as an industry and a category, this is kind of how we do e-commerce. So this gives you an example of what is probably going to be this year one of the biggest uh, launches of 2017, executed in the number one retailer, in the, in the country for fragrances by the number one fragrance brand. And like personally, we don't necessarily think this does justice to the, the power of emotion that fragrance has and the, like, the speci like the special feeling it triggers as a category. So a year ago, come in together and be like, okay, how do we like make something that will make the category move a little bit? We kind of got quite excited after seeing uh, Oliver's presentation, and we're like, okay, what could be the version of uh, hero images for our category? Like, how do we go about that? Um, so we tried different things. We tried um, ingredients. We tried um, moods, etc. And like, we like actually never came to market with this because of the Google restriction I was um, talking about. So maybe we're like, okay, for this category, this is maybe a step too far just now. We need to uh, walk before we can run. So total kudos to Lucy for trying this. I mean, it's really visionary. I know Ollie came up with the idea, but to bring it to fragrances would have been game-changing for the fragrance category. So kudos for the work that you managed to do. But actually, if we think about the way shoppers shop fragrance, actually, they're, they're not even necessarily on the, on the websites looking for fragrance. Um, it's, it's one of the issues that we have in the fragrance category. We don't have enough people wanting to buy fragrance. So really, we need to get people from Google onto the product detail pages. So for us, we took a step back and we realized what actually is the real intervention that we can do to really help drive our conversion, real, really help shoppers shop fragrance, and that sits on the product detail page. So Danny spoke about this morning about Perfect Page, set us up perfectly for the work that we've been doing on product detail page. Uh, so for us, it's about making the product detail page more compelling, more visual, more inspiring, and ultimately will help drive the sales. Yeah. And the four reasons why... So, the four reasons why. Um, we know that 42% of consumers will abandon their shopping cart online if the content that they're looking for isn't on the page. The information that they've looked for isn't there. They can't be inspired to buy something. They, they don't actually know what it is that they're buying, so they'll abandon their cart and leave. So, for us, knowing this, we've realized actually the product page has to be improved. Uh, the information that's there, the basic content that's there, actually isn't there. You know, it's, it's the most basic of things, um, but we really needed to work to fix that to make sure that we would avoid this 42% abandonment. So it's about optimizing the user experience and really bringing to life um, the, the elements that they need in, help, in order to help them convert. The second thing that uh, is more specifically true to, for fragrances is, uh, un unlike a lot of the FMCG categories that have relatively low price points and where uh, shoppers go to retailer websites to do their weekly shop and then they'll look for your product, for fragrance, most of the time, like it's a category that's heavily reliant on product listing ads from Google because people go into search search mode already in Google, knowing that they kind of 
want to engage with the fragrance category. So actually traffic driving to the product detail page is critical. And in the past, we've been a bit guilty of thinking about our e-commerce plan as just banners on the home page or the category page or content, nice content page on the dark corner of the website that actually nobody goes to, where really what drives fragrance uh, as a category is the traffic that goes through, uh, through the PLA. So that's why we thought it's even more an important reason that all that nice content that we have from the brand, instead of creating that content page, we actually put it uh, on the PDP. So the third factor is that the number one purchase driver for fragrances in store is smelling the fragrance. It's a no-brainer. You're in the shop, you smell the fragrance, you like it, you buy it. Online, obviously, that doesn't happen. It's so much harder. So there is work that we can do by doing sampling, sending samples when you buy the fragrance, but actually you need to have already bought something in order to get that sample. So what can we actually do on that product page to help consumers visualize what that fragrance smells like? So it's about bringing to life the scents, the emotions, the moods that that fragrance represents. And that is the big intervention that we need to try to bring online. And last but not least, we need to make sure that everything we do is mobile, you're all big converts, like especially on the retailers we work with, 75% of the traffic related to fragrance is through mobile and over 50% of purchase is uh, online. So we need to make sure we focus on that because really PDP, if you've got the right content, you also can uh, deliver that experience through mobile. So as such, like there are four interventions that uh, we did, but before we did that, we held the Clavis mirror, so that's where Clavis comes up. So we were like, okay, we're, we're taking on this uh, new um, uh, job at Coty. We want to understand really where do we stand today with the content. And that was quite painful. And it showed us actually there are a few things we really need to get better at. Uh, one thing is the basic content. Um, one second thing is uh, the share of search that actually is impacted by the content because of all the SEO and like content discoverability. Uh, so share of search really for us who have like we have 20% uh, market share in terms of value, just over that um, in terms of volume and yet only 14% of the first products coming up in a generic uh, fragrance search are for Coty. So this is definitely something that links to content and that we wanted to improve. Uh, enhanced content as well. We've talked uh, about the fact that visualizing the, the ingredients, visualizing what the brand stands for is really important to make sure we open up that uh, word of emotion. Um, and reviews as well, because we thought like, yeah, whenever we actually uh, have the reviews, they tend to be quite good, ratings are quite good, but we're missing uh, enough reviews um, on uh, some of our products. So we're like, okay, these are the four things we need to go after, and these are some of the examples of things we've done. So the first one was about improving basic copy content. Um, and actually, the, the most painful thing was re like going through uh, the Clavis uh, tool. We found out that actually on some of our brands, the actual brand name was not in the product description. So that, that's quite shocking. Uh, of course, it was in the title, but it just revealed that the people who actually write that content sometimes are like the brand guys uh, globally. They're like immersed in their brand universe all the time and they, they write the content for their Davidoff brand and like they write this paragraph of creative things underneath. But actually, they don't even think to uh, repeat the brand name in the product description. Uh, they don't necessarily understand the implication that it must have, it has in SEO, for instance. So just running this basic audit through Clavis just highlighted that, wow, there's something quite fundamental about the content that we need to address within the organization and train in the, the, the right people in the right way. Then the other aspect was uh, related to SEO. Using Google Trends, we just uh, very basically um, realized that uh, although we like to call ourselves a fragrance company, nobody uses the word fragrance, people actually refer to this product as perfume or aftershave. So actually there's like five times more occurrences of the word perfume than fragrance in how shoppers actually shop the category. Uh, so it triggered a big intervention about how we write our own content to make sure it's uh, SEO uh, friendly uh, by using the right terms. And like this, this might sound basic, but I think these two examples reveal that when you're in a corporate environment where you talk about your product in a certain way internally, sometimes you don't necessarily um, get into the detail of how shoppers actually engage with your brands. 
And the third um, intervent intervention to, um, <coughs> that touches uh, copy content is uh, that we know that like, some of our key retailers are really keen for us to produ uh, produ produce um, unique content for them, which, as you can imagine, is quite challenging when already your basic content in just one version is not good enough. But so we partnered with a few retailers to try and give them some point of difference by creating S content that was uh, SEO friendly specifically for th that retailer for their point of difference for those specific brands, working with our like internal digital um, digital agency. So some of the interventions we've done on on content. So the second intervention is a little bit more exciting. So obviously the basic content is super important and something that Lucy uh, touched on that we need to fix, but. Actually, the brands that we work on create some beautiful content. We have really famous faces representing our brands. The content that gets created for the PR use, for print, for social is amazing. And we weren't using any of that on .com. And it was just a massive miss. And if you think about the way that you shop for products online, when you go to buy a jumper or a car or a watch, you want to find out as much as you can about that product. You want to be inspired by it. You want to actually feel like how that product is, gonna, is going to be in your hands. We had all that information on fragrances, and we just weren't using it. So partnering with the likes of somebody like uh, the perfume shop, we've been able to bring all of this fabulous content, videos, GIF animations, uh, visualization of the scents, award wins, things like that, the, the endorsements of the face, bringing that onto the product page, not somewhere in the dark web like a content page. I remember when I did the first Boss the Scent content page when it launched a couple of years ago. It was amazing, and we got a global award for it because it was such a beautiful page. And actually, unless you've got your banners driving to it, no one was ever going to see that beautiful page. So putting this content on the product page, where they're coming from Google onto their product page, they can see all of this beautiful, inspiring content that they actually want to engage with. Um, the key point as well is it sits within where text used to be. So it doesn't sit in a different part of the page. You don't have to scroll across or anything to see it. You literally scroll down, which is your natural purchasing habit. At the same time, it's completely mobile friendly. So this looks exactly the same on the mobile screen as it does on the desktop screen. So it wasn't created just to fit the desktop. We look at our desktops all day long. I am 100% guilty of screenshotting everything on my desktop in the work and actually not doing enough on my mobile phone. And this looks fabulous on mobile. So this was a massive intervention for us and we would hope at the moment it's just rolled out on um, Hugo Boss. That's the only one that's gone live. But over the course of the next couple of weeks, we'll see it on another 20 or so brands as well, our key brands. Um, and hopefully we can bring that to other retailers as well. So it will really help drive the conversion because we know this is the kind of content that consumers want to see when they buy a fragrance. Uh, the third uh, intervention was about the rating and reviews. So like most of you, I suppose, know about uh, Bazaar Voice um, and uh, their syndication capabilities. Uh, for us, one thing that was uh, a bit difficult, not having a first party uh, data, either from the brand side because we don't have access to the Fashion House website or from the retailer side, is uh, we didn't have an easy pool of consumers that we could just send emails to and like drive the rating and reviews. So um, we wanted to find a way that we could have one scale and then secondly, uh, write the right costs as well to do that because it can get quite expensive to drive rating and reviews on all your, uh, all your brands. So how we approached it was to do a dual partnership with Buzz Agents, uh, who are word of mouth agency, and that have their own first party data that you can decide, you can target basically a group of uh, shoppers um, that is relevant for your fragrance, and then they kind of harness that word of, like those reviews that are impartial and independent, and that's kind of, they manage, and then we can syndicate that onto uh, Bazaar Voice. So we um, now, make sure we do that for most of our key products. And how we've tried to approach it with an ROI mindset is we worked backwards from the, the assumptions of uplift um, and understand like how much sales this is gonna actually generate to work back, like uh, depending on the cost, what was uh, sustainable to invest in because it can get quite expensive to, to run such a program at scale. So then another example of driving scale is via video syndication. So we all know how much people love videos and you only need to go on your Instagram and your Facebook to see the videos is where it's at. Uh, so we want to bring videos to our consumers as well. So the best way to do this is via a syndication partner. So we partner with iSight, um, who we send all of our videos to. And via their network of retailers who they partner with, they syndicate those videos out to those websites in one go. So if something needs to change, amend, come down, 
they do it automatically off their, you know, we obviously tell them, and off their own back, the one touch of a button, it comes down and the new one goes up, and we don't actually have to do any of that work. So that massively facilitates our job, um, because I don't have to keep remembering who did I send the video to, do I need to take it down, oh, it needs to be in this format, whatever. So this type of syndication is a brilliant way of getting video out to consumers um, so that they can engage with the brand. The good point about working with a syndication partner as well is they will obviously um, supply you with some analytics and some data, which was helpful for us because for us, we saw that on the brands which had slightly higher price points for us, we saw that we had the highest number of views. So for us, it shows that if a consumer is actually going to spend a little bit more on a fragrance, they're actually engaging more um, on that brand because they actually want to find out a bit more about it. They're investing more of their time because they're actually going to invest more. So for us, we realized Therefore, that on those higher price pointed brands, it's worth having this extra content because actually people are engaging with it. Um, at the same time, when we see people engaging with the videos, at the moment we only really supply videos which are our TV ads because that's all we get available in our toolboxes. But it gives us the, the basis and the, the, uh, the desire to go to our global teams and say it needs to be more interesting content than just a TV ad. People are engaging with the videos, therefore you need to be providing us, because we get our content from our global teams, you need to be providing us with videos that are slightly more engaging, that show the product in situ, in use, um, and exactly how it sits in somebody's lifestyle. So that will hopefully come at the next stage for us. So yeah, in summary, these were like the four of the key action uh, steps we took. Uh, just basically stemming from uh, the analysis that we had uh, with Clavis, SEO content, visualizing our sense better on the PDP, driving the rating and reviews and videos at scale. And what is great to see is, of course, Clavis uh, scores going up, but more importantly, uh, business results uh, going up as well. So uh, like uh, we've seen since we started making sure all these inter inter interventions as are being rolled out, uh, we've been growing 40% up. Uh, the category for fragrance is 15% uh, up in the same time. So we're winning share and efforts uh, paying off. So what have we learned? Um, so Clavis, thanks for having us today, has really helped us shape our action plan. So we were thinking about Blue Sky, thinking what can we do differently? It's amazing ideas. And actually, we just needed to bring ourselves down and realize that the wins were the smaller things. Uh, so Clavis really helped highlight the areas that we needed to work on. We can make the not so sexy stuff sexy, so product detail pages are boring, especially when they're on boots.com ch selling Chanel. Uh, so the work that we've done hopefully highlights the fact that you can make that product detail page a little bit more interesting. Uh, what we have realized, however, is that it does take a lot of time and resource. Um, it's not an easy fix, especially for us where we have to rely on global teams to provide us with the content. Um, however, where possible, locally, we've manage to make a difference where you realize trends in your own market that you can influence, absolutely go ahead and uh, try and push for those because we've managed to make some real wins by realizing locally what would work for us and bringing other people on board to that. Syndication absolutely makes life easier because it just uh, facilitates you to do other things. And then when you get a retailer who really wants to come on that journey with you, somebody like the perfume shop or you know, others that we've worked with who realize the benefits in doing these fabulous things, simple but fabulous things, Actually, it makes our life so much easier and makes us want to work with them more. So really try to bring the retailers on that same journey with you, which we've managed to do, and it's been incredibly rewarding. So um, I, I thoroughly recommend that you bring them along that journey with you too. That's, that's cool.